Welcome to the Center of Everywhere podcast, where we explore stories of rural Minnesotans who are making a difference in their communities. Rural isn't in the middle of nowhere. It is in the center of everywhere. And for the inaugural podcast, we'd like to welcome Julie Tesh. She's the president and CEO of the Center for Rural Policy and Development. Well, we uh, probably should start out with kind of a description of what the Center for Rural Policy and Development is and, and you know, why it was created and what it does. That is a great place to start. Um, we were created in 1997, actually by the Minnesota State Legislature, to do research on policy and issues affecting rural Minnesota and kind of with that rural lens. So if we're talking about health care, we're talking about transportation, there's not a one-size-fits-all on policy um, at the state and local level. So we come at it with a rural lens. So rural health care looks very different than urban and suburban health care. So that's what we do is do the research and bring that forward to decision makers at the state level all the way down to the local level to make sure that they're getting the accurate, non-biased, nonpartisan information. So that, in a nutshell, is what we do. And we've been doing that since 1997. And we have a staff of three, myself and two others. And uh, I think we get a lot done with, with a small group that we have. And then we also have a board of directors. We can have up to 20 members on the board. And most of those are appointed by the governor's office. So we're very excited about that. Well, and uh, you have a virtual office situation, which is uh, we do. you know kind of saving some dough for the taxpayers and so forth. Yes, we save some dollars, and also it's nice um, that we're able to figure out the rural broadband type thing. So myself, I live on a farm outside of Waldorf, Minnesota, in southern Minnesota. Marnie lives in Mankato, and Kelly, um, one of our other researchers, he lives in New London. So the whole virtual office thing works for us very well. We used to have an office in St. Peter, but we closed that about five years ago. And so this virtual thing works. We are able to meet virtually via different technologies. We try to get together as a staff once a month in person because it it's just a better outcome when we can be together. But we're working on it. You know, sometimes the technology out on the farm is not great. So I come into Mankato or go to Waseca and, and hang out at a coffee shop. But so far, so good. Well, good. And uh, there is a website car- called ruralmn.org where um, there is just a treasure trove of information about rural Minnesota there. Um, it's got to be so deep because of all the years you've been collecting all this data. It really is. It really is. Last year we had some students from Gustavus that were taking a class. They were helping us with uh, looking through our website, looking through social media. And the amount of information that we have on that website really overwhelmed them because it is we are a research entity and they were able to help us kind of narrow down and you'll be seeing some changes here in the future on our website to try and make it uh, more user friendly to people because unless you're a researcher or really looking for some specific answers it is a treasure trove. It's a great treasure trove, but there's so much. Mm-hmm. There's so much information. And so we're trying to make it easier. We're going to be coming out with videos, doing webinars, doing this podcast. And so on the website, we'll be having all of those things just to make it a little easier so you can get a bite-sized piece of our research. But that that website, ruralmn.org, is just fantastic. All right. And uh, I really have to point out that when you think about you know, doing research in rural Minnesota. Rural Minnesota is a lot of square miles. It's crazy. Yeah. It is crazy. You know, I I travel anywhere from, I think of this last year, I've been here since October of 2018. I had to think about that. It seems like longer because it's just been so good. But, um, you know, been anywhere from Grand Rapids to Laverne to Harmony um, Moorhead and North. I was supposed to be going up to Roseau this last month, but uh, some personal things happened. But we cover the whole state, and the state is very different, you know, from north to south, east to west. And so it's it's very interesting meeting the people, you know, up on the Iron Range and talking about their issues and, and their opportunities as well. So it, it's, it's really fascinating. I've learned a whole lot in uh, doing the, uh, the the former program that was a three-and-a-half mm-hmm. minute thing. And uh, I did find out like that the kinds of activities that go on in other parts of the mm-hmm. state 
are much different than what happens here where, where I live in, in southern Minnesota. Right. You know, I grew up in southern Minnesota as well, and I think you just kind of take for granted that everything else is like that. And boy, it sure isn't. Yeah. And and it's so fun finding out the different cultural nuances around the state. And I have friends from all over the state. And, you know, just because we do something a certain way here doesn't mean that that's the way it's done in other parts of Minnesota. And so just realizing there's a lot of micro cultures within the state is, it, it's fun to realize that I was up visiting with one of our new board members and she's a member of the Leech Lake Band and just learning about the different tribal um, groups and and their culture and how they integrate and how they're trying to keep their culture going. You know, we have a lot to learn there. Mm-hmm. I, I personally have a lot to learn, you know, but it's it's great having her on our board and just learning about those communities in our state and how we can work and research some issues for them. To uh, paint a picture for uh, listeners, if you start, let's start in Duluth, for instance. Mm-hmm. You know, you have shipping, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's then, yeah. you know, there's the ore boats and all the rest yeah. of that stuff. And then maybe like go all the way over to Three, Thief River Falls and you've got, you know, a completely different. Completely different. You have you there. have sugar beets and you have, you know, it's mainly farming or you have Polaris there making snowmobiles right. and Articat. Um, you know, and in between there too, you have timber. Yeah, lots you of it. You have lots of timber and lots of paper and you have mining and. Uh, we can't forget tourism. Right. That is such a huge part of the economy in all of Minnesota, but especially in that northern area, you know, Brainerd North. Mm-hmm. It It is just, uh, there's a workforce shortage overall in the state, but especially in those tourist areas, you know, they bring people in from other parts of the country. They bring people in on internships from other countries to practice hospitality. And so it's, it's a very diverse economy up yeah. there. Yeah, in fact, I've noticed that when I've been in the Brainerd Lakes area before, and I imagine it's probably true for um, Detroit Lakes area, and, you know, you'll run into some of the service staff, and clearly they're not from here. Yeah, you know, you know I had, I had, uh, I, f- I was checking in somewhere at a resort near Brainerd this last summer, and, you know, the person checking me in was from France. There you go. And I'm like, oh, what are you doing here? And, you know, they told me about the internship program that their college has. And they come over and they live at the resort for the summer and work. And that's what a lot of the resorts do. And which is great because we need those people yeah. to be working. Otherwise, our tourist places wouldn't be able to uh, function very well. Right. And then you get down to this part of the state. Yeah. And, you know, there's certainly a huge agriculture uh, footprint, but there's a lot of other stuff, you know, and tons of, you know, educational institutions Mm -hmm. scattered all over the state and in rural parts of the state. Yeah, the manufacturing area here in southern Minnesota is, um, boy, thank goodness we have that economically because, Mm -hmm. you know, the ag economy right now isn't wonderful, Mm -hmm. but our manufacturing economy continues to grow, even though I know that we have, you know, Seneca and a few others that are laying off or shutting, you know, it really is, there still is a shortage of workers again. And so the manufacturing, the healthcare, government, you know, each county has their own government services for the most part. Some do merge with other counties, but you need those government services. And so in each county, they have those. And so that's throughout Minnesota, but you look at manufacturing and then healthcare. Well, yeah, get down into Rochester, you know, Southeast Minnesota and yeah. We're in the land of Mayo yeah. and and so healthcare is is huge. You know, when you go to other parts of the state and again, I I grew up here. I, I was gone for about 20 years, but come back and you know, it's Mayo, but you go to other parts of the state and it's Centricare or it's um Alera, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. And so just just figuring out rural health care and doing some research on those areas is different. But yeah, even agriculture, when you look at the differences here in southern Minnesota, you know, we're corn and soybeans and pigs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, thank you, Martin County, for the pigs. And actually, yep. we're, on our farm, we are surrounded by hog barns. So I, I like bacon a lot. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so good. Um, we also have, I think we're the number one turkey producer. We are. We are the number one turkey producer in the country. Yeah. And that that just always surprises people. I know. But, I, you know, we have we have great... Um, trade organizations mm-hmm. like the Natural, National or State Poultry Association and Turkey Association, and they do such a good job. Mm-hmm. Well, so if you want to learn more about the Center for Rural Policy and Development, certainly ruralmn.org, there's tons of information there. 
And uh, thanks for tuning in to podcast number one. Thank you, Julie. Thank you very much. I look forward to being on here again. Julie Tesh is the president and CEO of the Center for Rural Policy and Development. You've been listening to the Center of Everywhere podcast, where we explore stories of rural Minnesotans who are making a difference in their communities. Rural isn't in the middle of nowhere. It is in the center of everywhere. Everywhere.